Okay, we are back. What's up, everybody? Drew here, thatanxietyguy.com, along with the Supreme, the Supreme Jedi, Jedi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Billy Cross from anxietyunited.com in the UK. <laughs> yeah. The Supreme Jedi. It's a long story, but it's a funny one. Yes. Um, I'm not telling it. But yeah. Carry on. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by <laughs> for our next episode here. Uh, here. Today, we are going to talk about exposure therapy. Um, yes. It's a big topic if you are having anxiety and panic type issues. And we could probably do an entire series on this because it's a I big, giant topic, and we should. Today, we're really just going to focus on the intro, like what is exposure therapy? Like, mm. We were talking before we went, on, went live about how amazing it is that some people have never actually even heard of it. Yeah, I, I posted in a Facebook group. Um, yeah. some, somebody asked how they could start to you know, make progress with their agoraphobia, and my response was exposure therapy. And then their response to that a couple of hours later, what is exposure therapy? That was just like, it's amazing, I right? suppose, because we've got so much experience with it, yeah. you know, and we're well familiar with the term. But we were talking before, maybe because it's sort of part and parcel of CBT. Yeah. Maybe people don't actually see that as a separate thing, although I suppose they are intertwined. It's just when you think, when you get offered CBT, you think therapy, you think sitting in a room. Right. Because of the way that it's portrayed. You think that's all it's going to be when reality, when you get stuck into it, you will move from sitting there chatting to actually getting out and exposing yeah. yourself. That's sure. the key. And mm. it is part of CBT, cognitive behavior therapy. Mm. So you know, the reason why they call it that is there's that therapy. And, and we were talking about this before. You know, therapy, you're right. Here we have that mindset of like, oh, that's when you go and sit in an office and, and talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more to it than that. So in, in cognitive behavior therapy, your, your therapist, your practitioner, counselor, whatever you want to call them, they will teach you how to identify negative thoughts and change them and challenge them and, and you know, get rid of them and that sort of thing. Um, so there's, there's cognition involved. You're learning cognitive, not tricks, but skills mm -hmm. to combat the negative thoughts and the, the, the triggered thoughts and those sort of things. But then you get to the behavioral part, cognitive behavioral therapy, and that's actually doing stuff. Putting it into practice. Actual stuff. And so mm -hmm. that's when you get, that's the exposure is really the behavioral part of cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's exactly mm -hmm. what it sounds like, exposure. So yeah. you find the thing you're afraid of and you literally expose yourself to it directly. You intentionally go to the thing you are afraid of. And that's that it. that freaks a lot of people out. Well, that's it. That's the thing. That's the point, isn't it? That's where people come and stuck. You go and you do the talking bit and you get your head around maybe because even that can be difficult just sure. going to an appointment yeah you get your head around that and then you think right we're going to sit we're going to chat we're going to learn how to navigate these episodes yeah and then the therapist will say right let's go and navigate some of these episodes right let's and that's go when out. the alarm bells start ringing yes I've seen a post, a post on another Facebook group and somebody had said that they'd just seen their support worker for the first time. The support worker had gone to their house. Right. And then for the next appointment, the support worker wanted the sufferer to go to them. You know, make an effort. Let's make some progress. And the, the amount of comments that I've seen were just saying, wow, the support worker should be fired. This, that's disgusting behavior. How can they expect you to do that? But, yeah. You know, I didn't post a comment, but I thought to myself, that is it. That's what you've got to do. That's exactly if you're right. Gonna, if, if you're going to make progress, then eventually you're going to have to go and see that. Further. You can't learn it all in your on your sofa. No, no, you can't. You can't, you can't read it. So exposure is really based on the premise that we learn through experience. Human beings learn through experience. So we learn to be afraid through experience. You have a panic attack in the supermarket, so you don't want to go to the supermarket anymore. You've learned to be afraid to go to the supermarket. And, and we can unlearn that, but you only unlearn and learn through experience. We're, we're creatures of experiential learning. So you can't read about it. You can't talk about it. You can't watch videos about it. Those things will help, but you ultimately have to actually confront the thing that you're afraid of. And that's yeah, what exposure yeah. is all about. It's a process. Yeah. So it's actually used. It's not just for people that deal with panic attacks and agoraphobia and that sort of stuff. Uh, exposure is used to cure or, you know, to uh, yeah, cure, we could say cure, simple phobias. If you're afraid of dogs, for instance, you know, mm -hmm. you use exposure therapy to overcome that fear of dogs. And it's a graduated thing. It's usually called graduated exposure for a reason. And you might start yep. with just sitting in the therapist's office looking at pictures of dogs, which could be enough to get you kind of freaked out, right? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And you learn how to manage your response and, and be afraid properly. You have to learn to be afraid. That's and and uh, then from there, you might graduate to, uh, you know, maybe going to a veterinarian's office and looking at dogs from a distance 20 feet away, you know, just yep. hearing them barking. And mm-hmm. of course, you'll freak out for that. You'll learn how to manage that response. And in the end, you'd work up to the point where you're literally holding a dog, playing with a dog, and you've overcome mm-hmm. your fear. The phobia goes away. Mm-hmm. And that it, it only happens through the experience of actually being afraid yeah yeah you know and learning that. i think so. an- another good thing to think about with that is like with exposure therapy people get to the comfortable place and then they just stop and say oh, i can live with this yeah. but you would if you were scared of dogs you wouldn't just be happy with looking at a picture of a dog and saying oh, i'm cured right you know you wouldn't reach that point oh let's look through a thousand photos of dogs and say that you're no longer scared of dogs and then somebody walks past with a dog and you crap your pants right you can't have that you know yeah you're still there so you've yeah. It's not about just reaching. It's about going all the way. So if we're going to talk about what exposure is, and we're covering that now, and, and really more importantly, what are the expectations? What should you expect when you go into it? What you expect to happen? What should you not expect to happen? I think, you know, the object of the game is, again, exposing yourself to the thing that you fear so that you can learn to manage that response. And what you're really doing, the, the crux of the whole thing is that the fear that you are experiencing is irrational. There's So we can go back to our one-on-one series. The, the fear is real, but there's no danger. There's no real yes. danger. That's exactly right. So you have to, the only way to learn that the fear is baseless is to experience the fear and actually experience the thing that makes you afraid. So That's we need it. to define what are we actually afraid of? So the first expectation and exposure is not so much to, we'll try and think of it. I can never think of another example, but we'll use the supermarket, for instance. If you're afraid good, to go, to, it's a good one, right? Because many people have that. If you're afraid to go to the supermarket, you know, are you really afraid of the supermarket? Is it the supermarket that you're really afraid of? You know, the answer to Absolutely that is not. No. no. But what are you afraid of? It's those thoughts, those feelings. Right. It's what, it's what you're expecting is going to happen. Yes. So it's not, you're not exposing yourself necessarily to the supermarket. You're exposing yourself to the thoughts that come along with being there and the, the bodily sensations that you're afraid of. So that's really what we are afraid of here. Yeah, yeah. We're not afraid of the shopping mall or the, mail bo- or the post box or the supermarket or the school exactly. recital. Or We're not we're afraid mm-hmm. of those things. We're afraid of how we feel in those things. Mm-hmm. So the expectation for people like us when you get to exposure is that you, you, you kind of have to expose yourself to panic and anxiety. You have to That's intentionally yeah, you have make to, that happen. Yeah, yeah, you have to go as far as you need to to actually bring it on. Right. Because there's, there's no point. We said it in the last the last podcast didn't we there's the successes don't come when you go out say if, if it is the post box and you walk to it and you're fine you know that's really a nothing a nothing exposure you froze on my screen oh i don't know what <laughs> there you go i'm back i froze on my that's own better. screen too yeah <laughs> uh, there you go okay so yeah you don't you don't learn when you go out and everything's just a breeze and you're not really pushing yourself you learn when you put yourself in those positions and you learn that you don't need to bail out. You don't need to run away. Yeah. You know, you learn that the physical sensations and the thoughts and that are just that physical sensations and thoughts. And right. that's it. There's nothing more to it. And they're the same sensations that you might have in many other instances. You'd have those same sensations if you were exercising. Right. If or- you're even sitting at home on the sofa watching TV. Sure. Sure. You can experience mm-hmm. those same sensations if somebody like sneaks up on you and plays a joke on you and frightens you, you'd have that same jolt of adrenaline. So yes, the object of the game is we will expose ourselves to those thoughts and those those sensations through whatever means we need to getting in the car, going to the supermarket, looking at a picture of the supermarket and it's graduated. So what you can expect to happen is that if you enlist the aid of a therapist or somebody who, you know, practices this, they're going to start gradually. You're going to, you're going to sit and learn some of those cognitive skills to help you process those thoughts and deal with them more constructively. Um, and you're going to start slowly. So no, nobody is good. There is a thing called flooding, which means if you've never left, if you haven't left your house in a year, flooding is, is an extreme thing. And it means that you're going to go from being housebound for a year to just going 100 miles from your home to yeah. a crowded shopping mall in a foreign and just city. And just in the middle. Bam, yeah. and you're just thrown in the middle of that. That's called flooding. And it can be really effective, but very few people do that because mm-hmm. it's you have to really have a good therapist who has done that before. And so you're not going to do that. Most of the time, you're going to start very slowly. If you're housebound, the therapist may come to you first 
like mm-hmm. like that post you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Then they they may continue to come to you and just sort of kind of get you to the front door without even walking out the front door. Then they may yeah, take yeah. you on a short walk down down your own street. You know, then and you'll work up as you go. So that's, that's it. You've you've got to be prepared to actually do that. Yes. Something that I did originally when I very first died was made a list of five things that I wanted to achieve. So like my first one was walk into the mailbox. I know we always come back to it. But that was my that was the first thing on my list. So whatever steps I needed to take, whether it was standing at the front door one day, do it again the next, you know, 100 yards up the road the next day, just working on reaching that one goal. Right. And then when I was comfortable with doing that, when it became boring, I just moved on to the next thing. And that was how I worked. And by the time I'd reached like the fifth thing on there, yeah. I'd realized that not only had I made it to number five, which was being able to go to a supermarket, right. it had opened up so many other doors as well because I'd gradually increased my exposure. You know, By the time I reached the pinnacle of what I thought, this is my limit, right. when I reached it, I was way open to going for dinner, yeah. You know, going to a pub, going here, there, and everywhere, and it didn't affect me half as much. It had just opened those doors. Yeah. But that's what it is. It's losing the fear. It's realizing that the feelings and the sensations are nothing well they are something they are something that those they're real yeah, yeah. The, the fear wow. the fear is real but the danger is not yeah. <laughs> so we're rescinding your jedi title you're, oh, god you're on jedi suspension for 10 hours um I'm an ewok. and you know you're an ewok so you know what that illustrates really you know talking about expectations what you expect from exposure so you addressed maybe the post box and then maybe, you know, the school and then maybe a pub and going out to dinner. And it wasn't that you could say, and, and so, but it, once you achieve those milestones, you were open to doing other things. Yeah, Suddenly yeah, you were willing really to do other realizing. things. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because what, what you expect, you didn't overcome your fear of the post box. The post box didn't frighten you. Exactly. What you exactly. actually were overcoming with the, the fear of those sensations. So it's like, well, if I can go to the yeah. post box, I can go anywhere. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, that's that's good to expect it. You have to expect. So what can you expect? Expect that you're actually going to have to do work. You're going to actually have to confront your fear. You're going to intentionally be afraid, usually with the help of a therapist. They're going to get you through it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's you're going to gradually expose yourself to the things that you fear the most. You're going to learn how to respond more constructively. You're going to learn how to unmask the fear. It's mm-hmm. real fear, but the danger isn't. You'll learn through experience what that is. And the the if you do that work, the progress can be really fast. So you can expect reasonably quick progress. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. doesn't involve laying on somebody's sofa for two years. It, it really usually, yeah. if you really get into it, usually in the, the space of a month or two, if you're going weekly or twice a week kind of thing, you can make a lot of progress in a short amount of time. And yeah, wonder, yeah. like, why did I sit on my sofa for so long? You, you'll mm-hmm. wonder that. So I think those are the good things that you can expect. This is this is what you're going to do, and this is what you can expect to happen. But, but it's going to be it's going to be hard, hard work. Yes, the, this is the, now the bad things to expect. Yeah, yeah. 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 they yeah. don't appreciate how I know, like sitting here and saying it, and then I can sit and and say that it's going to be hard work. But when I go and do it, it is hard freaking work. It is horrible. It you is don't hard. want to feel like that. I think you said something ages ago, like people don't want to hit themselves with a, with a hammer. No. <laughs> you know, so why would you want to put yourself through this pain? That's and exactly right. And turmoil. That's exactly right. So but the answer is because if you don't, you won't. You won't. You're learn. just going to stay where you are. We go, well again because we we are creatures of experiential learning. We can learn mm. to be afraid through experience. So if, when you have the first panic attack at the shopping mall, you can very quickly learn to not go to the shopping mall. Yep. But And you will only unlearn that also through experience, going to the shopping mall and seeing like, oh, there's really no danger here. It's the only way to actually learn it So mm-hmm. is through experience. So that's why we have to do exposure. And so the things you can expect is that, the good things, the bad things you can expect, not bad, but, you know, realistic things. Like Billy said, yeah, it's yeah. really hard work. It's not easy because especially when you first start, you have to be really brave to, to face fear. Mm-hmm. You just have to. There's no way around that. And then the other thing to that you can expect that's you know people don't like to have to expect is that you're going you're going to be afraid. It's not okay. Let's see what not to expect. What does exposure therapy not do? Exposure therapy doesn't extinguish your panic attacks. That's not what it's supposed to do. There's an intermediate step, and everybody gets tripped up there. Yeah, yeah. Like I, my therapist made me go to the shopping mall, and and I had a panic attack. Well, okay, that's what's supposed to happen. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. So it's what it's what you say after I had the panic attack. Did you run out? Or did you just stay there? Exactly. Exactly. So exposure therapy is not designed to extinguish your anxiety or panic. So if you go into it thinking that there's two things that it is not going to do that most people hope that it's going to do. It's going to stop their panic attacks instantaneously. Like this is a way to somehow stop anxiety from happening. It's really not. In fact, it may increase your anxiety a little bit when you're involved initially in facing that fear. Yeah. But it is going to teach you to not be afraid of the anxiety, not to be afraid of panic. And when you're no longer afraid of it, that's when it goes away. Mm -hmm. So you have to make that intermediate step that says what it will teach you to do is not to be afraid of your own panic. Don't be afraid of, you won't be afraid of having a panic attack anymore. Um, So it it won't make it go away. It'll just teach you not to be afraid of it. And the other thing that it won't do is it will, it's not a therapy that's designed to help you learn to live with this. Yeah, yeah. And I know I've encountered people in my travels too that have expected that to happen. They thought that the therapist was going to teach them how to navigate. Mm -hmm. Right. Like this will teach me how to navigate the world as an agoraphobic. Well, no, it's not going to teach you that. You're not trying to accommodate the disorder. You're trying to, you're trying to get rid of the disorder. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever had, we've all known people like that, I guess. And it's, it's a shame because they, they, they tend to go down a path of failure because they expected the wrong thing. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. They, Maybe they expect too much. Well, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? They expect too much. You expect that you can just go, I don't know, do it. And then you. a lot of people we've discussed before where they've gone out and they've said, oh, I went to the supermarket, yeah. had no anxiety and everything. That's brilliant, fantastic. Yep. But then the next day, the next time they go, they have a panic attack, they run out and then it's like, oh, shit. And then maybe they'll go again and have no anxiety. Right. But that's not that's not what we're that's not the answer. Right. It's not to say that success is when you go and you don't have anything at this stage anyway. Obviously, long term, that yes. is the idea. We want to of end course. up there. Of course. But now, while we're trying to work on it, the success is when you experience it and you get through it. And you don't drink water and slap yourself on the face or right. all these safety behaviors. You don't need any of that. It's when you sit there, you face it, you get through it. And that, that's, how you, that's how you learn. That's the only way to learn. Yeah. It's horrible. And so that is like such a doofus when I say all this crap and then I go out the door and freak out after five minutes of walking. But no, that, but the reality doesn't change. Right. The method is the method. That is how it's going to be done. You've just got to put yourself out there and, and be it, prepared to take it. It has been proven for decades. This isn't a new thing, right? This is not a new thing at all. We have decades and decades of clinical evidence that shows it to be the most effective intervention we have in the case of anxiety disorders like this. But it's also hard because people, people expect it, the wrong things from it, and they also expect it to be easy or painless or comfortable, which is – I can't fault anybody for that. When I say that, yeah, yeah. I, I don't mean to sound like I'm picking on anybody. We, well, nobody wants to be uncomfortable. I don't want to be uncomfortable. <laughs> but the true measure of success when, when you're going into exposure therapy is to get to the point where you know that you have an exposure to do and you truly do not care whether or not you are anxious or not. Yeah, yeah. Not that you're not anxious. The, the true measure of success is I don't care that I'm anxious. I'm going to do this anyway. Yeah, that's the point. My anxiety is no more of a bother than having a head cold or the flu might be. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't want to go to the supermarket when I have the flu, but if I had to, I can. You know, since yeah, it yeah. kill me. Mm-hmm. Um, so really, that's what you should expect. Expect to learn to not be afraid of your anxiety and panic. And mm-hmm. don't expect it to be some sort of instant cure or a way for you to learn to navigate the world as an agoraphobic yeah, yeah. or or with panic disorder. That's not what it is. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that, that means everything. And if you're not willing to accept, well, okay, this is therapy that means I'm going to have to intentionally be afraid, then, you know, until you get your brain around that, it's you kind of you kind of really have to buy into that before this becomes an effective way to go. That's it. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So. You know, that, that's kind of the, the nuts and bolts. What is it and what do you expect? What are you sitting expect? there waiting for, man? Get your yeah. bloody shoes on. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about that too then, I guess, while well, we're at it. We've only been at it. We, this is a short one for us. We haven't even been 20 minutes, but let's talk about that. And people ask me all the time, well, do I have to have a therapist? And, and it's expensive and even here, insurance, and maybe you can afford it. Maybe you can. I understand that. You, you don't have to have a therapist. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at somebody here who I know has done a ton of it on their own. That's you. 
I think it would have perhaps been more effective if I, if I did have guidance though. Yeah. I think that's perhaps where I've fallen off is when I've we've we've discussed it where you get to that comfortable stage. Yeah. You know, I can go to, I can go shopping. I can go take my kids to school. I'm right. all right with that. Whereas if I'd have had somebody that said, "No, come on. Let's get on a plane." You know, yeah. let's fly and go see Drew drink a cup of tea in his office. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff is so far beyond the reality of my <laughs> expectations, but it's like that's where I should be heading and I think if I had somebody there G and me on telling me this is the next step this is the next step yeah don't get comfortable you know i think that's where a therapist would come in that's true somebody yeah. that's somebody who just not to just sit there and say everything's gonna be okay right we don't like that but it's somebody to actually you know push you to well, actually g you on yeah I think you need it and i you know since it's an active it's an action oriented therapy you have th- you have work to do you have assignments to do <laughs> You almost need the therapist becomes initially the therapist is a teacher. So, that, you know, a good therapist or counselor, yeah. or whatever you want to call it, is going to teach you what, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what the program is going to be. These are the skills I'm going to teach you. These are the, the concepts behind it. And that's really helpful if you not don't have a background in behavioral sciences, you know, and you don't know these things. So the therapist will be a teacher at first. And then the therapist just becomes a coach. Like you said, yeah. cheering you on, pointing you in the right direction, pushing you where you need to be pushed. Um, Really, it becomes a coaching thing more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is possible fine. to do it without a therapist. It is possible. But yeah. you're right. It's a, having a professional who who actually does this full time, all the time, just that, can really be effective if you can manage to do that. If you can get I that person. One, one thing to consider is like your motivation. If you're motivated enough to do it, then yes. you, you can do it. That is true. You can do it. That is true. That is actually very true. De- depending on how far at the end of your rope you are, that I'm just yeah. not going to take this anymore. I-, I think those people do have a little more success, even without professional help. They can do it on their own. Yeah, I suppose it just depends how how yeah. low you're supposed to, oh, not how low you're supposed to, but how low you need to get before something ignites and just yes. says, and you say, that's I'm it. not prepared. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. And then that is a big deal. Motivation actually matters. But there are a lot of resources you can use. There are there are good books. And after we get done saying you can't you can't fix this with a book. But you can the Anxiety and Phobia Handbook by Edmund Bourne. That's a really good book. And it's not terribly expensive. So for those of you watching, go and find it. You know I'll put a link in the description put, put to my link. Amazon affiliate link. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to pay for Billy's plane ticket to come see me and this is the way it's gonna happen. No, but that, that's yeah. there. There's a bunch of these books. We talk about Claire Weeks all the time. She's a good foundation, but she doesn't really give you the nuts and bolts of exposure. But like the the Born at Born B O U R N E Edmund Born, mm-hmm. his books are good because they actually that's a book that you might use with a therapist, and it will explain a lot of those things. Um, so checking that you know books are good resources. They're good resources online, and sometimes the coaching and like you said, somebody to cheer you on. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you could find that just in a good community, a good Facebook group, or yeah, you know, exchanging videos on YouTube. Like that's how Billy and I met. You know, really. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is how we met. So yeah, there, are, there are ways to do it without a therapist. It doesn't have to cost you a ton of money. It might be slower. You might hit, have a couple more setbacks and stuff, but it's doable. And if you surround yourself with people who, and this is a different topic, we're talking about the social media topic, but. My feeling with that is, in terms of expectations of exposure, if you surround yourself with people who will not accept your failure and not coddle yeah. you and, and are willing to like give you a little tough love and say, nope, it's not okay to rest today. you got to get out and do it today. If you can surround yourself with people who are invested in your success and who will cheer you on and support you and encourage you and motivate you as opposed to soothing you and you know coddling you and telling you it's all okay, you have a much better chance, a much better chance. So in I that respect, if, if anybody is if anybody is planning to join Facebook groups, sometimes you find like the the groups with like 150 million members. They're the ones that are just really interested in getting the numbers up. But yep. from what I've seen, in my experience, that the smaller groups are actually more effective. You do yes. actually get genuine, helpful advice in there. It's not just yeah, you know, you can't share links to this, that, and the other because we don't want to lose members. That's a lot. Yeah. It's a gripe of mine. I would urge everybody, too, if you're going to try and get into exposure on your own and you're looking for some sort – or even with a therapist. I'm sure most therapists would agree with this. And you want some sort of support system and you want to find that online. 
before you join a Facebook group, if you can see the group, some of them are private or, or a forum on a website, read it and see what's going on. Yeah, when, yeah, have a look around. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there are hallmarks. When you see a lot of, you know, people posting, and, and we all post, you know, when you're struggling, and you want to vent about your struggles. And when the comments are all, it's okay, it's okay, it's going to be okay. Trigger so warning. We all need a little bit of that, right? When every post begins with a trigger warning, when everybody's talking about how we need more awareness of this and how people don't understand and how, you know, I dare anybody else to live with this. All valid things. We all need to hear those sometimes, but you're really looking for those forums and groups where you hear people. Yes, where people are sharing their successes and their failures. And you know what? When somebody has a failure, you tried to do an exposure, it didn't work out for you, you bailed. You know, the best comment you can hear from other people in the group would be like, you know what? Dust yourself off and you could do it again in a couple of hours or tomorrow's yeah. a new day. Could get out there again. You know, we we'll, we're to, behind we used you. To give that. Yeah, that, that's exactly what you used to spur us on. If it wasn't somebody else doing something, yeah. like, and you're, you're sitting there watching them go to a supermarket and that was the motivation. That's right. But then even if you, you know, if you felt that you couldn't do something, there was always just that support. Yeah. That's that's what it was all about. It was about constructive support, yeah. not pity. Right, not pity. Mm. Welcome to the party, pal. So, hey. <laughs> so that's, you know, in terms of exposure, what you can expect. You can do it without a therapist. Try and find yourself a really positive, encouraging support system if you can, though. Mm. Don't, don't fall back into the soothing, you know, coddling thing because that, that tends to decrease your chances of success with exposure, too. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. And I think it's important to say, you know, before we start to wrap it up here, that we're not telling you to go out and do anything actually dangerous. No. So the thought of going to the supermarket, I'll just keep saying supermarket, hate me if you will. Uh, the thought of going to the supermarket just sends you into a blind panic. You know, I understand that. I, I was there. I used to be that guy too. But, but in the end, nobody's asking you to do anything that's actually dangerous. We're just asking you to do things that are uncomfortable. There's a difference. I was there yesterday. There you go. I did it. I went for it. You did and it. Guess what? I'm here today doing a podcast with Drew, which yeah. means that I survived. Right. You survived your trip to the supermarket. Mm. Nice. Mm. So we'll do more on exposure therapy down the road, I think. We'll talk about the nuts and bolts of how it actually works because people mm. don't know. They really don't know how it works. Mm. We could talk about some success stories. And actually, it would be good if you're watching this and you have exposure success stories. Like, send them in. You know, yeah, yeah, put them in I the do. comments or, you know, on our Facebook or wherever you find us because we're both all over the damn place. But, yeah, yeah, we'll talk about successes. We'll talk about like, – we can talk about our own successes and failures. I'm more than happy to talk yeah. about my failures. Yeah, yeah there were many. And uh, we know we'll kind of go from there. But for this time, I think maybe we've – got anything else you think we can add to this? Oh, dear. I've got oh. comments. I've got comments from previous videos, but we should probably save them for another Q&A. We'll do a Q&A. &A. Well, we'll throw yeah, a couple yeah. in. You have you have exposure comments for now, or any of those? Uh, somebody asked, "Does anybody out there feel like they're going to faint?" I'm a, I'm going to put this into like exposure, you know, maybe sure. feeling like they're going to faint. Now, I did reply. So they asked, "Does anybody feel like they're going to faint?" And my reply was that I think I feel like I'm going to faint, but I don't know if I ever am actually going to faint because I've never fainted before while I've been out. Very so good. So I, I think. That I may faint, and that was the thing. It was like, have you ever actually felt like you're gonna? Because I just don't know. I don't know what it feels like to faint. Right. But I think I think I'm going to. But well, I am because I have. Okay, that's really that's actually perfectly on topic. Believe it or not, I know you probably think it isn't, but, oh. but it's perfectly on topic, and I'll tell you why. Expectations of exposure and that sort of therapy, and one of the adjuncts we're talking about the cognitive part is that. So if I was, you know, that person's therapist, I would, I would answer that. Well, have you ever felt like you're going to faint? And I would say felt like doesn't equal reality. Like yeah. th that phrase, it feels like is one of those things that we need to learn to avoid like the plague. It feels like I'm having a heart attack. It feels like I'm going to die. It feels like I'm going insane. It feels like I'm going to faint. It feels like I'm going to fall over. Feels like is not reality. So feels like and is is two different things. And so probably just add, I think it feels like. I, I think it feels right. Yeah. Or, or yeah. you know, so your therapist, before you get out in the real world and actually start going to the supermarket, the shopping mall, the post box, whatever, before that person takes you out on your actual exposure, they would go through that sort of thing. So when you say to yourself, it feels like I'm going to faint and you want to bail on it because it feels like, that person would teach you. So you would expect to have somebody teach you the skills that says, don't act. Don't don't make your decisions based on what it feels like, because yeah, feel, yeah. feels like isn't isn't reality. 
you know what? It feels like I'm going to have a million dollars fall on my head right now. But the odds yes. are that's not going to happen. But it really feels uh. like it. So I'm going to go buy a Ferrari because I feels like like mm. how how ridiculous does that sound? Like right yeah, now yeah. in my bones, it feels like I'm going to find a million dollars when I open my office door. So I'm going to go online right now and buy a Ferrari. That yes. would, people would think I was crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yet exactly. we, we yet we make our decisions based on it feels like I'm going to faint, even though you've never actually fainted. Mm-hmm. So. That is a, it, that's something to expect. Expect that your therapist, or if you learn about it yourself and you read about the techniques, that's something to expect. You will learn to challenge that thought and dispel mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm, and get rid of it. And that's the, that's the point is that it is just a thought. Yes, I don't care what it feels like. I yeah, only care, exactly. I only care what is. What it is. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, so there you go. So you, <laughs> that was very good, dude. Yes. Somebody else mentioned the fleeting <laughs> thoughts and like, because in the video that I did yesterday, I was getting that where I was just, I was having this just flash of thought out of nowhere. Hmm. Like I need to, I need to run out of here. Yeah. And I didn't. And I said on the video, I said, I'm not running out of here. Like, but why did I just have the feeling or the thought ra- rather? Yeah. Why did I just have the thought that I need to run out of here? It's just out of nowhere. So I, I know the answer is to just not act on the thought and right. recognize that it is just a thought, but it's like, when the hell does that stop? <laughs> Um, Answer me, Drew. When? <laughs> oh, you're actually asking the question. I'm running out of here now. Yeah, right. <laughs> when does it? When does that stop? That's that's that expectation thing. What do you expect yeah. to happen? And, yeah. and I think people go into it and they expect like, well, you know, I'm going to have my five sessions and that won't be happening anymore. It could happen yeah. for a long time. There mm-hmm. are still times for me, for me, that I still have that thought. I need to bail mm-hmm. on this right mm-hmm. now. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know if I could say that they would ever fully ever stop. It doesn't happen That's on a daily I basis for me. Yeah, that, I you accept know. that. I've just accepted that. I, there are times, and they're very rare for me still, where I may start to feel my anxiety rise in a given situation, and the old habits are still there. Mm-hmm. And, and I will think, like, i, I got to get out of this right now. Yeah. So you may expect, because we're talking about expectations and exposure, that that may never stop. But I can tell you that they will decrease. The frequency of those thoughts will decrease. And your your ability, what you can expect is that your ability to dismiss the thought and just a, a 30 seconds later, I don't care about the thought anymore. The mm-hmm. ability to dismiss the thought will increase and the frequency of the thoughts will decrease. That's what exposure will do for you. And the key is, again, that it is just a thought. It's just a thought. And you will yeah. learn that from experience because when you're out in the real world and you're doing your exposure and you have the thought, i got to get the hell out of here right now, and mm. you stand your ground and you don't act on it and you recognize it as just a thought, let it come, let it go, and you, you use all your skills, the next time you have that thought, it'll just be a little easier to dismiss it, just a little. Yeah. And then the next mm. time you have that thought, it'll be even easier to dismiss it. And this is how we learn through experience. And that is what you expect to happen in exposure. So – it won't only help Look you at that. be Look at the way that we brought that. Yes, back in. and and so it won't only oh. help you be okay with a well, racing car, we. or well, we we we're doing it together. <laughs> so it won't only help you with the physical stuff and that the symptoms of panic. It will even help you learn to deal with your thoughts. These are all positive things that you can expect to happen. You won't think those things as often, and when you do think them, you won't care as much. So that yeah. is what you can expect. Mm. I'm playing with my guitar picks as we talk. Um, yes. Yeah. What else? We got anything else you want to throw at it? Somebody asked a, a deep question. Is the purpose? Well, it's not that deep. I don't, I don't know, know how deep I'm feeling. Oh, dear. Is the purpose of exposure therapy for everywhere to become a safety zone or to get into the habit of feel the fear and do it anyway? It's it's a little bit of both, but it's mainly yeah. it's mainly the second one. Mm. Um, it's not a ha- I'm, I'll, I'm going to modify that a little bit it's not learning the habit of feel the fear and do it every, anyway because that implies that you'll always be afraid and that's another yeah. thing this is good this is another thing that people expect like I'm supposed to do this every the day right tell you. they are spot on the viewers I love the viewers so hey, a Most lot of people poor, feel that poor like Johnson. okay great so I can learn to go to the supermarket the shopping mall whatever and, but I'm afraid when I do it but okay I'll learn to do it that's cool I, I, I can learn to do that does that, does that mean like every time I have to go and buy tomatoes, I have to be afraid and deal with it? No. So it's not the habit of feel the fear and do it anything because you won't always feel the fear. It'll start to go away. Once, you're, once you can do it and, and you unmask the fear, you say, well, there's nothing, there was nothing to be afraid of. The fear will go away. So it's not really the habit. It's um, exposure therapy is just, it's just a way to learn, like picking up a book and reading or watching a video. It's just a different way to learn. You're learning experience. And I yes, what will happen is the, the whole world becomes a safety zone. A now. safety zone, exactly. The whole world becomes a safety zone. It doesn't yeah, matter yeah. where I am. 
I could be on a plane. I could be in Florida. I was in North Carolina. I've, did, I've been in a lot of different places now. And all right, maybe I might have a panic attack on the plane. I don't know. Could be. But yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter. The plane's as safe as, as this office or my house or anything else. So, but well, if, My therapist from like years ago just said that I am the safety zone. So you, wherever I am, yes, the safe. Wherever you are. Yes, I've heard uh, a variant of that, which is you need to be learn to become your own safe person. Yeah, yeah. So which that's is good. that's another good one too. Yeah, that is a good question. That was kind of deep. I don't think my answer was that deep. I'll try and get deeper next time. Another question. Sure. For you. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> this is a question that I've seen loads of times. What did your GP diagnose you with? And for me, I don't think I've ever like officially been diagnosed or labeled with as something. It's just that like I've gone there and gone with a complaint, whatever it is, this week. Hmm. And then just been told, yeah, that's probably anxiety. But I've never been, like, s- stamped with, you are this. So, uh, did you? Did you ever get officially diagnosed? Is there such thing as officially diagnosed as this? I'm thinking. Because uh, they spur off into so many different things. Like, for me, health anxiety, social anxiety, sure. agoraphobia, panic disorder. Right. Chuck them all at me. What's the difference, in a way? Yeah, yeah. It's me, fear. me personally, was I ever diagnosed? I believe that officially, and we're we're way back here, in like the mid nineties, ninety six or so. I, Everything was in I, black and white. It was in black and white, and really back then, your prescriptions were written in stone tablets. It was, yeah. it was, they were very heavy, very heavy, Billy. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe my official diagnosis from my family doctor, my GP, was panic panic disorder. I believe, and but I I know that. You know, if you know anything about the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, what insurance companies use and mental health practitioners and GPs use, there's there's panic disorder, there's generalized anxiety disorder, there's panic disorder with agoraphobia. There's even agoraphobia without panic disorder, although that's pretty rare. So, But in the end, what does it matter what your diagnosis was? That's, that was what I was thinking. Right. I, I mean, so this I think I, my official diagnosis was probably panic disorder. And at one point, it would have been panic disorder with agoraphobia, but... What's the difference? You know, the, the, the approach is the same. Exactly. I mean, it might, it's irrelevant. might be a little different when it comes to health anxiety and social anxiety. Those are slightly different, but the principles are all still the same. Health anxiety is a tougher one. We'll have to do a couple on health anxiety. Yeah, well, that I've said. Yeah, health anxiety issue. is almost purely cognitive, almost purely. There's almost no, you can't really expose yourself to a heart attack, so. Yeah, yeah, there's a forum that I've used in the past, and like if you go on there, the health anxiety is the busiest section sure. every single time. Thousands of people just, sure. I feel this. Does anybody else? What yeah. is this? What is this? Right. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. And even though they perhaps learn, I know we're going off. No, no, it's okay. Tangent, yeah. But like, even when somebody says, yeah, I felt that. It's nothing to worry about. It still doesn't register. Like the next time that it comes back a month down the line. I've right. got this again. Does anybody right. else get this? And this time, it must really be a bad thing. Yeah. The last time mm-hmm. it was nothing but this time. This is the time. And I think, you know, to bring it along, to bring it back, and we can bring almost everything back to what to expect in exposure. If you're dealing with health anxiety, exposure is a tough one because it's health anxiety is almost purely a cognitive construct. It's what you think. Yeah, yeah. It's your interpretation of how you feel. So it's really hard to expose yourself to that in a way. Um, so it's a little different animal. Social anxiety is, is similar to if you have social anxiety, exposure will help you. Because you, you put yourself into social situations in a controlled uh-huh. way and learn to manage that anxiety and overcome it and those fears. But um, so what is your diagnosis? Honestly, it sounds really flippant, but I say who cares? Jedi. So, Jedi diagnosis, supreme Jedi. <laughs> you need to be out more, my friend. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's my take on diagnosis. That's it. Yeah. All right, we're, we're, th- we're 38 minutes into it. I guess we should wrap it up. Not everything we'll has do to a, be We'll do a comedy yeah. special next week. We will. We're gonna, I'm not going to sing a dance, though. Nobody wants to see that. Ah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So I guess that's the story. We're sticking to it. Uh, yeah. So if, you know, as always, comments, questions, bring them on. If you're watching on Billy's channel, my channel, my website, doesn't wherever. matter. Wherever, I've Facebook, started Twitter. Them, started adding them to anxietyunited.com. Good. That's a good place to start. So, yeah. yeah, you find Billy at anxietyunited.com. Find me at thatanxietyguy.com. And, and there's links on both sites to our YouTube and our Twitter and our Facebook and all that stuff. So, you know. I'm going to make an admission now. Uh-oh. We didn't go bowling last week. <gasps> what happened? We just didn't. I just, I weren't brave enough. 
do you just didn't want to go bowling or, or did you just kind of bail on the bowling? We, we sort of, we toyed with the idea and it just got later and later in the day. Yeah. And we, dro- we we actually got in the car, me and my daughter and my, my wife, but my son didn't come. He didn't want to go out. And we just drove around for like half an hour and then decided, well, I decided, let's not. Wow. So it was, it was a loss. It was a big loss. Well, I'm admitting it. I am admitting it live. There's no going back. There is no going back. We're not editing these. We never edit right. these. Just so everybody knows, right. these are we just go on the cuff, off the cuff here. Well, you know what though? You you're owning it. So, what are you doing the rest of today? Go bowling, man. No. <laughs> I went for breakfast yesterday. I went. I went to a shop yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know what? Just before we, we sign off, I guess, you've got all the contact information and everything. That's a good story that you shared that. I, I think it's really great. I appreciate you sharing It that. makes me human. It makes me human. It makes you human, right. It's, even Supreme Jedis have their fall down sometimes. Exactly. It happens. Exactly. And you know what? Take this as the final. The thing that you can take away from this video is listen to Billy's story about how you, you're going to go bowling and you decided at the 11th hour not to go bowling. For whatever reason, you bailed on it, right? And, and it's obviously weighing on you. you. You actually wanted to confess it here on the podcast, which is admirable. The confessional. There are two responses that I could give Billy right now. So pretend, you know, this is just, we're not actually face to face. We're just two, wait, two strangers. It. Type it in. We're on a forum right now. Type it in. And, I didn't and, go bowling. I was supposed to go bowling, but I got too scared. I sat in the car and I just said, I can't do it. What right. do you advise? Please help me. So now, trigger warning. trigger warning, bowling trigger, if you're triggered by bowling. So mm. there are two possible responses here. And this is what I want everybody to take away. Give me the non non Drew the non Drew right, response. Right. First. So if you are if you are the person, if you are Billy and you're looking for like somebody tell me something to make me feel better here, there's two ways. If you're not me, you're gonna say, It's okay. Nobody nobody understands how that feels. They don't know. They don't know. Your wife doesn't know how that feels. Thank you. She, I dare her to have a panic attack and, and live through it. We're warriors. We don't, do, we don't die easy. I dare them. They don't know. We need more awareness of this. It's okay. It's okay. Don't let anybody make you feel bad. That's, that's what most of the time you're going to see. And when you see that in a form, run the other way. So what, don't feel any better. what Billy's friends should tell him and what I will tell him is you know you should have went bowling. You know that. You admitted it here on the podcast for a reason. And you know what? If I were you, I'd go bowling today. Even though you don't, might not like bowling, I don't really like to bowl. But but you got to do it very soon, today, tomorrow, sometime. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, that will weigh on you. And you know what? You might feel like shit when you go bowling, and you'll hate it, and you want to leave. But do it anyway. And then yes. in the end, you'll feel like Superman. And then then I will raise a pint to you, and we will laugh about it together. Yes. And that is the right response. So exactly. If we bring it back to our topic of exposure, look for people who will support your exposure. Mm-hmm. And there you go. That's it. All right. So next time we're going to start the video with a still shot of you bowling. <laughs> no? <laughs> Maybe. All right, dude. I'll consider it. I'll consider yeah, it. Do it. You, you got to get out there and do it. That's the only way you're going to solve that problem is you just got to exactly. do it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you're way more experienced. You know. You know how to do this. So. Yeah, I bowl. You could bowl. I can. I'm terrible at it. So, all right. We'll see you guys next time, I guess. I think we're done. Yeah, we're cool. Yeah, we're out. Later. Ta-da.